Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Philosophy Podcast. I am your host, Controversy, and to my right, ladies and gentlemen, my co host, as per usual, Mr. Darren Love. And together, we are the Philosophy Podcast. Thank you to you guys for tuning in once again this week. Thank you for tuning in to a brand new episode. And yeah, without further ado, let's get this show on the road, ladies and gentlemen. Um, what is on the agenda for this week, mate? What is, um, what is today's hot topic? I've been thinking about life. Life? You know, yeah. So, so it's an interesting topic, really. Okay, so today we're talking about... Life. Talking about life. And maybe death a little bit, you know, but not too much about death. But it's, so. a part, it's, a, it's part of the cycle of life, isn't it? Isn't it? Well, what is life? You know, this is life, isn't it? Yeah, what we're living and experiencing is life. You know, it's not, it don't last forever. No, nothing does though. Does it? No. You know. Everything is a continuous cycle and transition and evolution. I think life yeah. is something that nobody's expected. Mm. Or ask for really. It's not like um, God's there and he says, "Do you want to, you want to have a life?" Yeah. You know. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. Just wait for your father and just wait for your father to meet your mother and I'll give you a life. And it's quite funny life, really, isn't it? Because like you know, you see the children; they just sort of accept it, what it is, you know. Yeah. And but like, no one gets a choice in the matter. No. If two people right now in, in, I don't know. The most random place in the world decide to get get it on and have sex and get freaky and the woman gets pregnant then you know before long the baby comes along you know and that baby's born wherever born wherever wherever it's born and to whoever parents and you know has now a family that it never like you said never asked for never you know i mean when yeah. a, when a baby is first born Right. doesn't know that it exists, does it? No, no. Doesn't know it's actually alive. You know, it's mm. almost like a tree, really, isn't it? It's, you know, it, it, it's trees. Trees are living yeah. things, but they don't have eyes, do they? Do not have any or ears. I don't think you know, like we do. Mm. You know, but yeah, life is um hard, isn't it? Sometimes you know, I think can be mm. can be hard. Mm. Can be easy. I think, you know, and I think it's up to you to make it easy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you're always going to have ups and downs in life. This is the thing, like, um, I think I talked about it pre in a previous episode, so I won't expound too much. But I think sometimes, like, as human beings, I think sometimes we have, like, a misconception that life is supposed to be all completely easy and we're supposed to be happy. 100% of the time and etc 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 I don't think personally I don't think that's how life works you know life is about it's balance you know everything in life is a balance you know you go through ups and downs and everything kind of ebbs and flows you know um, and I think it's understanding that and embracing the fact that sometimes you have to go through trials and tribulations um, but the hope is, is that when you go through these things, is that you come out a better person after it, you become a better person, or it helps you to grow, or it helps to give you understanding or knowledge, or it's something that, you know, was able to teach you something so that you don't do it again in the future, or you don't, you know, um, make that mistake again, or whatever. Um, so I think it's, you know, life is, a, it, to me, I look at everything as a learning experience, you know, whether it be good or bad, you know, everything's a learning experience, a chance to having a fresh perspective or, you know, new ideas and, um, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't think everything's always supposed to be rosy all the time like sometimes people think. Uh, and don't get me wrong, um, you can be happy, yes, you can be happy all the time, but you're going to have different variations of happy, if you see what I mean. Like, me, I'm a very happy person, um, and probably the same for my mate. Um, but you have different variations of happy, you don't feel like happy is static all the time. You're going to be happy every day. You might feel happy every day unless something catastrophic happens or something really bad happens and that's different. But generally speaking, you're happy every day, but you're different levels of happy every day. You're not the same level of happy every single day. It fluctuates depending on the day, how you're feeling, 
etc. You know, whatever you know, what's going on in your life. You know, um, so yeah, I think everything's a learning experience. You know. But yeah, I'll let you, I won't, I'll let you have the floor, mate, I don't want to. Yeah, I'm just trying to think, you know, like, you know, like, if, if life was easy all the time. Yeah. You know, um, I think, like, you know, everyone's learning to get wise, aren't they, in life? Mm. You know, that's one thing, you know, I am too, you know, and mm. even today I might have made a couple of mistakes, do you know what I mean? Mm. And, you know, yeah. but that's how you, you know, I think life is all about getting, you know, improving, like you say, making yourself a better person. Yeah. Well, I was watching this thing the other day, right? Um, I didn't watch the whole thing, but I think it was kind of like, I believe it was kind of like a documentary on Michael Jordan or something. Um, and as we all know, Michael Jordan, you know, famous person, um, not only for obviously, you know, shoes and footwear, but because he is arguably probably one of the best basketball players of the law, you know, of our time, let's say, per se. And um, he was basically saying, he had this, this he, kept, he had this saying, and it was, you can't succeed unless you fail. And people, I think some people got it straight away, and then some people, it took a minute for them to kind of sink in and think about it and understand what he was trying to say. He was like, this is the amount of shots that I've missed in my career. This is the amount of times we lost when I was given the chance to get the game-winning shot, but I missed. These were the amount of times that, you know, we didn't, you know, we got to the final, but we didn't succeed. And he was naming all these different things, but he's saying, these are all the things that I, I failed. But because I failed so much doing, taking these, taking these opportunities, 80% of the time, I was successful. He was successful, if you see what I mean. Like he, you know, the amount of, you know. Um, so he said that's what made him so great, was being willing to fail. You know, that's what him, that made him... You know, that's what drove him. Yeah, you know? I don't mind failing actually. No, using it as a as a lesson or something to make you stronger or to help you grow, or you know, like you know, we all make mistakes. Like you know, we all, you know, every day, like you said, sometimes it's like every day you make you might make a mistake. Sometimes you might you might not be conscious of it in the minute at the time because it might be something very very minor, something you might not even think about at the time. You know. Um, um, but that's why obviously reflection and self, you know, self analysation, all these things are good too. You know, it's good to sometimes sit down and analyse yourself as a person. You know, think to yourself, am I growing as a person? Am I becoming the person that I want to be? Am I becoming the best version of myself? You know, am I growing or am I um, regressing? Am I going backwards? Am I okay? Let's say okay. What's a good example to use? Okay, let's say someone is um let's say someone's a pathological liar let's say right and they know this they know this they've identified this flaw within themselves um and they know that they want to fit they, they come to the self-realization that they want to change it they want to be a better person and they want to stop lying or they want to tell less lies than what they're already doing. They realise that their worst flaw that they've got in their lives is that they lie a lot, let's say. Um, just being hypothetical. Um, once you identify the flaw and you're honest with yourself about yourself, that's when you're able to grow. That's when you're able to then say to yourself, okay, I know that I want to get better in this area of my life. I'm fucking up in this area of my life, or I'm not being as as um, attentive to this area of my life as I should be, or whatever the case may be. You know, no one is perfect. You know, it all works in, in progress. And even if you're great in most aspects of life, there always be one or two aspects of your life that could use improvement that you could improve on. You know, no one is perfect, you know, we all make mistakes from time to time, sometimes we're so busy trying to divide our attention amongst loads of different people, trying to keep our wives happy, our kids happy, our, you know, our families happy, and, and etc. Trying to keep everyone happy, it's a balance, it's a juggling act, a balancing act. It's a very act, difficult you know? thing out there, isn't it? Like, when people do get married, you know, we all got different backgrounds, you know, do you know what yeah. I mean? And right. when people get married, you know, and they got to try to get on, 
yeah. each other, you know. Mm. And they've got completely different backgrounds, you know, mm. and everything, you know. And sometimes people do meet, all right, and they've had a lovely upbringing, both of them. Yeah. By two parents, you know, really beautiful upbringing, you know. Mm. And they meet and they have a lovely life. But it's not always like that, is it? You know, that, you know, not everyone's had a lovely upbringing. No. Do you know what I mean? And then when, say, me, for instance, when I met one of my first girlfriends that I had a baby with, she did have a very upbringing at all. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm sort of like taking on a girl that's had nothing, you know, do you know what I mean? Trauma. Well, she's had no proper upbringing at all by parents, do you know what I mean? It was disgusting, do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It was awful. Yeah. You know? Um, but there's a lot of people out there who's not had no upbringing whatsoever out there, do you yeah, know what I mean? True. And then you all of a sudden meet someone and you kind of got teach them how to cook, teach them, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's phenomenal. You know, you know one of the life skills is cooking, I think. Oh, know? definitely. It's part of survival, isn't it? Especially in this day and age, you know? You know, eating and cooking and all that sort of stuff, you know? Well, you need to be able to make some nutri nutritious meals for yourself. Yeah, and you've got to learn about food a bit, haven't you, really? Yeah. You know, about what's good and what's not good, really, you know? And, you know, like I say, a lot, lot of stuff they sour out there, there's a lot of junk, isn't there? Well, a lot of shit. You know, a lot of shit today. A lot of, so much stuff today is like got vulnerable. preservatives in it and all sorts of shit in it. Even if it looks good, even sometimes stuff that's marketed as like vegan products or other stuff. Sometimes when you look on the back of the box, it's still full of shit. It's still yeah, it might have come from a different source, a different derivative of what it's come from, but it's still full of shit. You know, that's all right. sorts of stuff, and it's just like. Yeah. It's like goodness, like what we eat today in comparison to what it used to be, it's just, it's just not the same, like, you know? You got all these people buying up all these large pieces of farmland across different countries and now they're implementing all these GMO crops and trying to create um, their own meat now. You know, you've got this whole new industry that's that's starting up now with this, you know, this meat, this this like lab grown meat, so to speak, you know? And all this shit and it's like Really? You think to yourself, God, like, what? We, sometimes you think to yourself, God, what are we actually eating? You know, mm. what are you actually eating? Sometimes it's even if you're a very cautious person and you try your hardest to avoid all these things that have got lots of shit in, like, like even me. Sometimes when I go to the supermarket, certain things I buy, I'll always check to see what's in the what's in it. Sometimes before I buy it, to see, you know what I mean? To see if there's another alternative next to it that might have less preservatives in it or less whatever it is inside of it. You well, know it's all I mean? important stuff, isn't um, it? It is. And for survival in life. For survival, we. Really. Sometimes... Life, you know, you want to feel good in life, don't you? Yeah. Right. And part of that is... You know... Well, I'm a big believer in believing that your gut and your mental and your, and your, and your mental health are like, go together, so to speak. You're... What you... Like they say that old saying of what you are, what you eat. And I, I, I believe that a lot of food has a large impact on That's people's right. people's thoughts and people's thinking I think it does. and also how they feel as well mm. as well sometimes people consume products that make them feel a certain way and they don't realize until they stop consuming it and then they realize shit like you know that you know that's what i was eating or you know, drinking or whatever that was making me feel that way or not you know i mean you can see some people out there they they look like they've been eating junk food, mm -hmm. if you yeah. see what I mean. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're kind of brain dead as well, you know, because they've been eating junk food as well, you know. It mm -hmm. affects your brain, and everything, it, I think. It does, you've got to be so you careful. You've got to really, you know, like say, I think the most important thing in life is the moment in time, mm -hmm. right now, do you know what I mean, yeah? And people forget how to control that moment in time. Mm -hmm. you know, like, controlling your emotions is very important. Controlling your thoughts because if the thoughts belong to you, yeah, you know, so you've got to control your thoughts, control your imagination in a way, and control yourself, you know, and just enjoy learn. I think everyone's got to learn to enjoy the moment, yeah, all right. And I mean, like, if there's something out there, you know, you're walking along, you know, trying to enjoy the moment, whatever, and something goes wrong, you've got to still try to enjoy the moment somehow, mm. but deal with the problem. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's no good sort of like ducking down crying, is it? Mm. Do you know what I mean? You know, you've got to be positive, you know, and I just think it's just important to look after yourself and enjoy the moment. That's what's important in life. 
You know, there's nothing else, is there really? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's everything is like we talk about all the time. Everything's about balance. You know, because it's like at the end of the day, we've only got well. If you if okay, we all, that saying of we only we've only got one life. That thing of we all want to have a long, happy, healthy, fulfilling life. And a lot of us know what we need to do to kind of do that, if you see what I mean. Like, of course things happen, of course things happen in life, but generally if someone looks after themselves throughout their life and watches what they eat and drink and has a good diet and a steady exercise routine and they, you know, etc. keep their mind quite active and, you know, whatever, quite, you know, um, they tend to have, you know, generally a, lo a longer, healthier, happier life. Um, and I think, you know, it's, you know, it's just about being important, sorry, being, um, making um, the right decisions when it comes to making the important decisions, you know. It's, and also not being too rigid, too rigid and too strict with yourself to the point too that you can't also have a day or two a week where you have something you do want to eat kind of thing or, you know, like a treat or, you know, like a day where you can, you know, because you're only human too at the end of the day, you know, so you need, I think it's important to also be able to kind of as a reward, you know what I mean, if you spend five or six days a week eating healthily, you know what I mean, only having two meals a day, but the meals that you have are, are like well-rounded meals and it's, you know, and you, you know, you're drinking a lot of water and, you know, you just, you know, whatever, you know, but, you know, eating well, I think you should be able to have a day or two a week where you also, you know, have like, you know, have, have a pizza or you might have a burger and chips or you might have a kebab or, you know, whatever, like, you know, because, you know, it's, you're only human too and I think you have to also, um, satisfy that need as well, you know, that's important, you know, to have the balance, you know, you know, don't want to make yourself miserable either, you don't want to be t too rigid or too strict to the point where um, you're not allowing yourself to enjoy life either, because sometimes that does happen too, sometimes as human beings we get so caught up in our routines and um, that sometimes people don't want to have a break from their routine once in a while, you know. I'm not saying that you shouldn't stay consistent and stay disciplined. I'm saying once in a while you should be able to give yourself a bit of leeway, you know. If you used to go into the gym five days a week all the time and then one week for some reason you can only go four days a week, don't be upset. You know, that's what I'm saying. Don't be you know, don't don't let things control your life either because it's like anything in life. Sometimes exercise and certain other things can also become unhealthy for some people too. I think like because per, they become addicted to the personally you know, I think like going for a run every day is you know I wouldn't do it mm, right mm. you know I'd rather dance yeah some music you know what I mean that's a really it's one of the best, best exercises exercise. there's going you know yeah well not necessarily it, it depends, depends how much hey. it depends how much energy you put into it yeah with dancing, you know. Yeah. Sometimes when I'm dancing, or I like dancing, do you know what I mean? When I'm washing up and things, or whatever, do my housework. Yeah. Right, and I sometimes find something that I'll, you know, something good that I like, or I, and I get into it. Do you know what I mean? And I, I get put a lot of energy into it. Do you know what I mean? And then afterwards, I feel like I've done the housework and I've had a good dance. Do you know what I mean? And now I feel pretty fair. I can watch a film. Endorphins are flowing. Or something, you know. Yeah. You know, relax. You know, life is all about. You know, the moment as well, it's important to relax. Even if you're working, yeah, all right, hard, you can relax in your mental mind. You have control, you, you're with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just going to yeah. say, right, and I, I, I didn't want to cut you off, but something very important that Good I... Day. No, I know, but I just wanted to say something that I think is quite important, and I, I used to have this kind of attitude as well and I had to correct it within myself too that's the only reason I really want to share it with people is I think sometimes you have a misconception in life right that you have to work continuously in order to be successful and in order to achieve your goals you know I think sometimes when you, especially when you're younger you have this mindset of if I work seven days a week and I do this and I do this and I get, when I get home from work I spend four or five hours on what doing you know on pursuing my passion and you know and this is what I'm going to do. I think sometimes we have this misconception that you have to be constantly working in order to achieve your goals and I think that is a misconception a lot of us as people have. Yes, you have to be dedicated. Yes, you have to be disciplined. Yes, you have to work hard. Yes, you have to put in the hours, etc. Energy, money, etc. 
but you also it comes back down to balance again you know you don't you know you, you have you have to have routines you know and not only that but it's actually scientifically proven that if you're working a type of job where you have to you have to focus continuously for long periods of time heavy focus they estimate that you can only stay actually properly 100% focused between 4 to 6 hours a day if you see what I mean on so even if you work 8 10 12 hours a day they're saying that basically your focus is at its most optimum for roughly the first 6 hours after that it slowly decreases not saying that you may you know you know not doing your job or whatever the case may be but as the time as you as the after, as the day gets you know day, you know the day gets older and you know time goes on you know getting more towards the evening time of day um, whatever you know you know you get more tired your body gets you know etc you know um, so I think it's, it's just balance with everything you know you have to yes you have to be disciplined and consistent but at the same time you also need to rest sometimes you need to recharge sometimes you just have to give yourself a mental or a physical break and sometimes you know you have to remind yourself you're a human being and and you can you know you can overdo it and push yourself too far and, and, and you know and, and break yourself down you know you don't want to do that either because then that's that's um you know against what you're trying to do if you see what I mean that doesn't help the situation in any way you know so I mean like when I was go back to my marriage mm. 15 years ago and I was married for 13 years but at the end of it I was doing a lot of hours yeah and you know I had two jobs yeah and you're talking about balance you know and I I wanted to earn money, you know, to to provide for my of family, course. yeah, all yeah. That, you know, and make my, you know, give, you know, so I could do things, you know, you know, because money gives you power at the end of the day, doesn't it? It does, yeah. you know. But I was, you know, working so many hours all the time that I wasn't giving her any attention. That's why I kind of lost her at the end. You know what I mean? And it is all to do with balance, you know, and I. I know better now, do you know what I mean? It's sort of like I didn't, you know, when I got married, I really didn't know what I was doing, do you know what I mean? I was pretty thick when it comes to marriage and all that, you know, I just, sort of, you know, I kind of knew a little bit, but, you know, you, you've you got to actually experience these things in life, you know, to, yeah. you know, to understand it in a funny way, you know, and it's, it's only now that I do understand it, you know, before it's too late in a funny way, you know. So, so, you know, I think we all got to go through the same experiences, don't we, you know, in life sometimes, you know, marriage mm -hmm. and dealing with who you're with, you know, it's all mm -hmm. part, part of life really, isn't it, you know, it's, it's, it can be quite difficult, life can be, you know, and mm -hmm. like I said in the previous episode, I'm pleased today that I'm alone, you know, in a kind of way, you know, and I've got control yeah. of my own life. Now. Yeah, and your environment. And you know, because other, yeah. other people that come into your life can... You know, I don't know, affect mm. the, that control in a funny way, do you know what I mean? Of course, yeah, because you're you know, not, when you're with, when it's two of you, like, you're, obviously your goal is to make each other happy. Mm. So you're going to be doing things that sometimes she wants to do and, yeah. and compromising, you know? Yeah, it's like when you go to town and you go with your wife, say, or your girlfriend, whatever, mm -hmm. you've got to sort of like, she's got to go to the toilet, say. Mm. You've got to wait for her five minutes, do you know what I mean? But when you're on your own, you can just be free on your own, go to all that, and that you've got no waiting to do, do you know what I mean? You just yeah. really do whatever you want to do, mm. you know, which is pretty good actually, do you know what I mean? You think well, I think it. even too, sometimes even when men go shopping, if you go supermarket shopping or shopping for generally most things, men kind of, we know what we're going for, and that's what we're going to get, kind of thing, you know, we don't really. Well, I guess some men do, but predominantly, I guess men, most men, you know, we go in and get what we need and go, kind of thing. But whereas, if you go out with your wife for the day, let's say, for example, if I go to rest key for the day with my wife and kids, I already know I'm going to spend a large portion of my time tracing around the shops and doing all that kind of thing. And I already know what's in store, if you see what I mean. So, mentally, in my mind, I'm already ready for it, if you see what I mean, because mm -hmm. I know that's what it's going to entail but if it's me just going I'd already if, if I'm going shopping I'd say okay I know I want a couple of pairs of jeans some boxer shorts and a couple of pairs of shorts yeah, whatever you know what you and within half an hour yeah. I'd probably be in and out two or three different shops mm. and got what I wanted what I wanted if you see what I mean 45 minutes the most you know what I mean and I'm ready to almost pretty much almost ready to go kind of thing you know and you know 
head off. <laughs> Whereas like we're there, you know, if we go to the rescue for the day, we're usually good there, you know, good for four or five hours kind of thing, you know, by the time we've had lunch as well and everything else, it's, you know. It's nice because I mean, it's, you think it's a about, day out. You know? I mean, you think about all the supermarkets in town. I mean, a lot, lot, say a lot, lot of them are sort of close, you know, struggling to keep open now, you know, because of the internet and all that, you know. Mm. But you think about all the shops around, you know, like Boots, for instance, or something, like, you know, or you know, a lot of the shops are catered for women. Yeah. Mostly, aren't they? You know, there's not, there's hardly any men's shops, is there? That Especially way. in our town. Yeah. I mean, if you go to a charity shop, right? There's loads of women's dresses. There's loads of this. Right? Loads of dresses, and then there's yeah. on the corner. There's a section. A small for the section men's, for the men. Yeah. You know, and you think, oh, yeah. you know, I, I think it's all kind of made for women in a kind of way. You know, like makeup. A lot, especially da -da -da. like I said, especially in our town. I think there's only one shop in particular mm. um, that really like sells men's clothes and caters to men's, and that's that shop um, opposite Boots. If you see what I mean. The, of, next to oh, yeah, yeah. Superdrug, I think it's like that kind of area. Yeah. It's like a, a shop called is it Fagans or something like that, something like that. Oh, okay, remember. And they 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 sell, you know what I mean. But you know, that's you the know, only even, one. That's the only one. You know, even Superdrug, you know, it's, it's got loads of makeup it's in there. Predominantly for the ladies. It, you you really go you good. go in there, it's all the different uh, makeups and like you said and all that kind of things and all the smellies, all the different creams and soaps yeah. and. You know, that's more so for the women. Don't get me wrong, us right. men too, we keep clean and have our soaps and whatever, 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 you know, whatever else we need. But it's I mean, not there's, intricate like the ladies. There's just know? a small section for the men in, in boots and things, like yeah. shave Yeah. You know, just a tiny section like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's the men's, there's all the women's around here. Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere, you know. Yeah. But men's, boom, in the yeah. corner. Yeah. You know, yeah. the men's come out, men come up, you know. Well, I think they, out. I think they, they know to their men, um, to their right mate. I think it's um, men. Of course, we look after ourselves. If you see what I mean, we look, especially more so today than ever before. I think you get, a lot, especially you even see ads on the telly, ads on the online for it even today with all these different companies making moisturizers for men and all these different you know wrinkle creams and all this different stuff that usually well, you know, usually it's you see women using predominantly it's but it's, it's more you see it's more so they're starting to cater more to men today in, in that sense if you see what i mean i think men are starting to become more conscious, conscious yeah. especially the younger generation yeah. of looking after themselves not that we don't look after ourselves i'm saying we do look after ourselves but i mean they're more like into using these type of things, like whereas back in the day, us men would, you know, we'd have a shower, have a shave, you know, put on a bit of deodorant and brush our teeth and off we go, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it, not all the extra shit, if you see what I mean, it was just simple, a simple routine, whereas today, I think, you know, people have skin routines.